Hi and welcome to this video. I do have similar videos on React, Angular and Vue where I have a look at the future of these technologies. In this video I'm going to do the same with React Native. And as for these other videos which are of course linked below the video, I also do have a full article which is also below the video where you can read more about that. Now also as for these other videos, if you're liking this one, I'd of course love to hear your thoughts, comment, share, like, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Let's dive in. React Native is a technology, a SDK, a framework, a library, whatever you want to describe it as, that helps you build real native mobile apps, which you can distribute for the iOS and Android store based on JavaScript and React. Now, as with my other videos, I'm not going to dive into what React Native is in detail here. I'm not going to teach it in this video. For this, I do have a complete course though, which you can check out, uh, where you can learn React Native from scratch. What I want to have a look at in this video instead is which weaknesses and strengths React Native has and how I see its future. Now, I want to be very honest. React Native has its faults. And all these use web development to build a native mobile app approaches have certain problems. If you dive into these approaches, you will hit a certain point where things don't work, where, where you see that um, you built an application or you want to build an application, you need a certain feature and it's not that easy to implement it. You want to tap into a certain native device feature. Let's say you want to add face ID, you want to add maps and it's hard. Often you need a third party package for JavaScript for React in the case of React Native that helps you do that with a nice JavaScript API. But such a package might not exist or it's not maintained anymore or it has bugs or it is simply not compatible with the latest version of React or React Native or with the latest version of Android or iOS. You got so many parties that are involved that um, you will hit these frustrating moments that is pretty much guaranteed. Now you always find workarounds. You find another package that does it. You can fork a package and fix a certain issue on your own. Or that's actually also a strength of React Native. You write your own native code for iOS or Android and you can connect your JavaScript React code with that in one and the same project. Of course, the downside is that for that, you need to know how to write that code. You need to learn how to write Objective-C or Swift for iOS or Java for Android, or at least how to know that, uh, how to write that specific thing you're missing. Might still be easier than learning everything about these languages, but of course, it's also not the core idea of only using JavaScript and React. But you need to be willing to make these trade-offs and diving at least a little bit into iOS and Android development will never hurt even if you are using such a cross-platform solution like React Native. I will say that. And that definitely is kind of a weakness. The, the promise or the thought with which you dive into that is that you only use one language and often that will not be how it works or it will be how it works maybe but then you need to find packages that help you or implement a certain feature differently than you wanted to. That's not just about React Native though, that's a general problem you have with all these approaches no matter if it's uh, React Native, if it's Ionic, if it's Flutter, if it's NativeScript. Um, they all handle it a bit differently and some do it better or worse but that's how they work. But let me also mention that you of course still have that huge advantage of generally still only writing one app with one tech stack with one language that then gives you two different apps for iOS and for Android. So the time you save there is probably way more than you spend for finding workarounds because otherwise you really would have to learn two completely different languages or even three if you pick up Objective-C, Swift for iOS and Java for Android. So that is a huge benefit and that is the major strength of React Native. Now, of course, another strength is that it's developed by Facebook, therefore it's well maintained. We can rely on it being maintained in the future as well because Facebook uses it internally in its own projects. For example, a part of Instagram is uh, powered by React Native. That, by the way, also gives a hint about that this connection of real native code and React Native code is a thing because a part of Instagram is managed by React Native. And therefore, because of Facebook being uh, backing um, React Native, 
we can rely on that going nowhere. In addition, of course, you are also using React, which is one of the most popular front-end frameworks or libraries, excuse me, uh, that you can use. So that is React Native. It's string strengths and weaknesses as I see them. Now, what's the future of React Native? Well, of course, the React Native team in general always does its best to make development easier, to avoid as many frustrating moments as possible, to enhance this JavaScript to native platform communication. And indeed, you might have read it, Airbnb quit using React Native in 2018 because they simply found that there were too many things to work around. And that also had some architectural reasons inside of React Native, where communicating with the native platform could be extremely difficult because without going into too much detail, you will find more information below the video though if you are interested, but because in general that JavaScript to native platform communication happens over a bridge provided by React Native. That bridge used to be, and at the moment still is, asynchronous, which means if you want to do something on a native platform, essentially that is converted to a JSON package of instructions is sent over the bridge, then the native platform does something and sends it back. That is roughly how it works. And that async nature can make certain things difficult because it's harder to detect if some operation finished and you have to kind of register an event listener and so on. And that is overly complicated and that is one big re-architecturing where the React Native team is working on. They're making this simpler and that will help people writing plugins that implement native device features in JavaScript. It might help you if you write your own native code which you need to talk to. And in general, it should improve the performance of applications and reduce the errors you might be getting. The team is also working on other initiatives. They're dumping some overhead that accumulated over the years. They're merging components together. If you had different components for a date picker in iOS and Android, things like that might get merged. Some parts are outsourced into separate projects like the async storage, uh, which allows you to store data on the device. That is now a separate package, which has the advantage that it can, it can be maintained um, separately, which means it can uh, be enhanced, it can develop independent of the React Native main project. They're not tightly coupled together, and therefore each project can move faster. And therefore a lot of steps are taken to make working with React Native easier, to make the apps more performant, to get rid of errors, if there are errors, to provide better tooling and, and error messages. For example, the React Native CLI is now also managed separately so that this can move faster and can provide a better user experience. And the React Native team is really doing a lot of work on a lot of different initiatives. And to kind of get a feeling for the progress that is made, you can check out the resources I will link below the video. Now, that is uh, what the future will bring. And that's not just future in this year, though some of the biggest initiatives should land this year indeed. Um, they might or they will hopefully not require you to re rewrite a lot of code. In an ideal world, you don't need to touch any code, but there might be some breaking changes. It is simply hard to tell at this point, but largely they happen behind the scenes and will improve React Native in the way I just described. We'll also see the effect of that in the next years, of course, and some initiatives will only finish there or new initiatives might, be, might get started there. I think the overall goal of the React Native team remains to give you a solution that works well, that gives you clear help if you do encounter errors, that offers a great performance, a better performance that you might have today sometimes, and that makes it easy for other developers to build solutions for common problems for tapping into certain device functionalities. What I wouldn't expect is that the React Native team tries to get closer of the experience, for example, Ionic gives you. If you played around with Ionic, you see that there you have the full package. You have a lot of beautiful pre-styled components that automatically adapt their look and feel to the platform the app is running on. You have a lot of utility functions and so on. And that also is related to Ionic using a different uh, philosophy. It's a web app wrapped into a native app instead of a compiled native app, which React Native is. A React Native is more like, uh, here you have a very basic button, style it on your own, and you have to take care 
that it looks different on iOS and Android. That could also be considered another weakness, but of course you could also consider it the strength because it gives you most possible uh, power. You can really control what looks and behaves how, but you also have to do it. You have to make sure your app looks and feels appropriate on the different platforms and you get some help, but not in the same extent uh, or to the same extent as Ionic gives it to you, for example. But the, on the other end, you have a real compiled app, which can be a performance benefit. So it all has trade-offs. How do I then see the future of React Native? Generally positive, of course. Um, and because some of you wondered why the outlook is always positive in all these videos, because I only, right now at least, create the videos on technologies I actively use, and I don't really use technologies which I don't like. But for React Native, I think the outlook is positive. I think there are challenges. I think there also will be use cases, apps you want to build where it's not the best tool because you would find yourself in too many frustrating situations. But only practice helps there. Uh, only practice gives you a feeling for what you can do and what you can't do. And for many use cases, it will be an amazing technology that really saves you a lot of time. Nonetheless, I always recommend that there you also check out Ionic as an alternative because there building mobile apps can be much easier and the downside of having a slight performance hit because it's a wrapped web app might not matter to your app because modern devices are extremely fast. Nonetheless, React Native, learning it is always worth it. It uses one of the most popular front-end technologies and it really makes building cross-platform apps easier even with the frustrating moments you might face. But as I also mentioned, the React Native team is working on a lot of the things that lead to such moments.